Well, the winds of winter are howling down the Oklahoma Plains right now. So, Daryl, how is the significant winter weather going to impact cattle markets going through? Well, there'll be a, a variety of different impacts. You know, if we go back to the week after Christmas, there was a pretty severe storm in the, in the Plains area. It didn't reach as far as Oklahoma, but that will impact feedlot cattle uh, as we go forward. It affects performance initially, but eventually that'll show up probably with some carcass weight impacts and so on. And th that will continue with the weather that we're having now as well. But we're now getting weather, uh, you know, down into Oklahoma. And so it will directly impact our producers and the cattle uh, in the state in a variety of ways. Obviously, it's going to change feed requirements and other things for producers. Uh, we're expecting several days of sub-freezing temperature. And so, uh, you know, producers will have to deal with water access issues and, and other things. Uh, you know, in the short run here, uh, because of the weather and the expectations for weather, uh, markets are being a little bit slow to get started. There's not a lot of uh, interest in moving cattle and handling cattle in this kind of weather. So with all of that, what's the situation for stalker cattle in regards to wheat pasture? You know, we have a lot of stalker cattle out this year, which is, uh, you know, it's probably the best year we've had in several years. I drove uh, through a lot of stalker country uh, during the holiday period, and, you know, by and large, the wheat pasture looks pretty good. There's a lot of cattle out. Uh, this will impact them, although it's fairly typical to have this kind of weather. Uh, the wheat will slow down if we have several days of cold weather. But in general, I, you know, it probably won't be a major impact on the stalker cattle unless we get, uh, you know, some additional severe weather or some really long lasting uh, severe weather condition. So let's shift to the markets. It's, you know, the new year is officially underway. So what, what are, what's going on with the markets right now? Well, I think we're really just trying to get a sense of where markets are. It usually takes a little time in January to get a sense of the markets. Box beef markets drop pretty sharply the first week of January, but I think that's pretty typical. It's just kind of uh, sort of assessing what happened over the holidays, cleaning up the pipeline, if you will. Um, and so we'll see going forward. It'll take another week or two, I think, to really get a sense of the markets. Because of the winter weather that was coming in this week, some of the auction markets were a little bit uh, down this week in terms of uh, just not a lot of interest in, in, uh, in moving cattle right now. So I think it's going to take another week or two before we really have much of a sense of where markets are in the new year here. Instead of the extreme weather that we're about to face here in, you know, in, in about a week, what are some other things you're watching in 2024 in regards to the cattle markets? Well, you know, we, as we go into this year, it, it's a continuation of what we've been seeing. So cattle numbers are down. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking at when, when and how producers will sort of start that process of rebuilding. You know, Daryl, in addition to the Cow-Calf Corner series that Mark Johnson hosts here on SUNUP, there's also, also the Cow-Calf Corner newsletter that's celebrating an important milestone, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, about 20 years ago, Glenn Selk had been doing the uh, SUNUP series of Cow-Calf Corner, but uh, he started the newsletter, asked me to join him, and so uh, for a long time it was mostly he and I that did that for many, many years. Glenn's no longer involved anymore, and now Paul Beck and Mark Johnson and I kind of head up the Cow-Calf Corner newsletter. So that's a weekly newsletter that goes out to uh, anybody that's interested in getting on the email list. It goes to a lot of ag media and so on. We do that every week. Uh, rain or shine, and so we've got a, we've been doing it now for a little bit over 20 years. And the list of subscribers is ever growing, right? It does, you know, every time we do meetings, uh, you know, we uh, uh, promo it a little bit and, and people ask to get on the list. So I think we're up uh, over 1600 subscribers on that email list now of folks that get it or media uh, sources that get it as well. All righty, thanks Darren, congratulations. And congratulations to the OSU Beef Extension Team. And if you'd like a link to that newsletter, just go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.